Every year since 2008, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department has conducted a crappie assessment on Jamestown Reservoir in mid to late May to gather important trend data to better manage this popular fishery. We focus this time of year on crappies because they are shallow, they tend to be shallow. and if We get various information out of this, basically growth rates, length, weight information, condition of the fish, sex ratios, we collect the, that information, as well as differentiate between white and black crappies. Fisheries crews collect the fish by setting trap nets. We've got eight sets and they're fished for a period of two days and then we you know, set them and come back and check and weigh and measure. Jamestown Reservoir has good numbers and good quality of crappies, thanks in part to fish limits implemented in the early 2000s. In 2002, we went to 35, and then in 2006, down to 20. And finally, in 2014, we went to 10. And the reason we did that was some of the data that we collected uh, suggested that we had good survival of crappies, uh, not good recruitment. They're successful every year in spawning for the most part, it's the first winter that they have difficulty making through. Kratz said lowering the limits made Jamestown Reservoir more of a consistent fishery rather than a boom and bust fishery like it used to be. And there's a reason crappies do well year after year. Jamestown Reservoir is kind of unique because it produces a lot of plankton in the summer. Although our growth rates after about age six start to suffer, you know, and they start to plateau out because plankton's good for smaller fish, but it takes a little bigger forage to grow fish quickly to bigger sizes. Uh, that in combination with the, the, the spawning substrate that we have here. Jamestown Reservoir attracts a lot of ice anglers in the winter, but this time of year also provides plenty of action for crappies, and crappies also make great table fare. This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors.